Hello everyone. In this episode of the Grizzly G0704 CNC conversion, I'll be installing the components of the X-axis, the table, the ball screw assembly, and the left and right ball screw brackets. Here are the components that I got in the CNC conversion kit. There's the left ball screw bracket and motor mount, and a shaft coupling adapter to connect the ball screw to the stepper motor. The ball screw and ball nut assembly comes with the clamping block pre-assembled, and the right hand ball screw bracket also comes pre-assembled with the angular contact bearings, as well as a dust cap. So let's get started putting things together. I'll start by taking a look at the Acme lead screw and nut that were removed back in video number three. The original lead screw nut clamping block was not very big and fit into a simple oval cutout in the saddle. The replacement ball screw nut and clamping block is larger in length, width, and height and requires clearance slots to be milled out of the saddle. I intend to make a video in the future of the milling operations necessary in the saddle to make clearance for the ball nut. I don't have the ability to make that video right now because the mill is still in pieces. Be sure to subscribe if you want to follow along. Here's the ball screw assembly resting in the milled out pocket. In making this video, I've disassembled and reassembled the x-axis several times. Once after disassembly, I noticed some paint chips that you can see here between the grease fitting and the ball screw. These paint chips were scraped off the bottom of the table as it traveled back and forth. The clearances for the ball nut under the table are very tight, and depending on your casting, it may or may not be necessary to grind off a bit of metal from under the table. The first step is to put the ball screw assembly into place. The procedure that I settled on involved putting shims underneath of the ball screw. For shims, I used the washers that are one millimeter thick. I set the one millimeter thick washers in place overhanging the edges of the saddle so that they could be easily removed after assembly. I then set the ball screw assembly into place with the ball screw sitting on top of the washers. With the clearance underneath the ball screw set by the washers, I slid the table into place. With the table now sitting in the ways, it's time to install the gib. As I mentioned in a previous video, the original gibs don't fit anymore because I replaced the saddle. The x-axis gib shown here only went in about halfway. Because the replacement gibs are on back order and not expected for five to six months, I decided to try and use a 3D printed gib just to see how it would work. In deciding which type of filament to use, I had a choice between PLA or PETG. I decided to use PETG because I think PETG is an acronym, which stands for Prints Excellent Temporary Gibbs. Time will tell to see how it actually works out. I printed the gib with 100% infill, so it's solid plastic. I smeared on a layer of grease before putting it into place. I suspect that the plastic gib is not going to last very long, but then I don't need it to. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I put a dial indicator on the x-axis to check for play in the gib. With the table in place and the gib installed, it's time to put on the ball screw end brackets. Notice that the mounting holes in the bracket are slotted for vertical adjustment. The ball screw brackets are held in place with two cap head screws. Once the right hand bracket is in place, I install the other ball screw bracket motor mount at the left end of the table. I leave both ball screw brackets loose so they're free to move around for alignment purposes. Next, I install the shaft coupler onto the end of the ball screw. Here's another place where I employed my 3D printer to make a spacer for the shaft coupler insert. I noticed that when the shaft coupler was put together, the two halves were in direct contact with each other. This would prevent the coupler from flexing as it's supposed to. With a one millimeter thick spacer underneath each side of the insert, they would automatically provide the space necessary between the two halves. These spacers are not necessary as long as you pay attention when installing the coupler and leave the necessary gap. I install the shaft coupler flush with the end of the ball screw. With one half of the shaft coupler installed, I can use the adapter in my cordless drill to spin the ball screw and move the table back and forth as needed. The left end of the ball screw is not supported, and depending upon the position of the table, 
the ball screw may drop down. I positioned the table a couple inches right of center and then installed the motor to support the ball screw. Since the ball screw assembly is still loose in the slot, I positioned the table a few inches right of center to offset the weight of the motor. This keeps the ball screw assembly resting on the two washers used as shims under the ball screw. I check the right ball screw bracket to make sure it's not lifting up in the air and also verify that the ball screw is still resting on the washer. The next step was to fasten down the clamping block on the ball nut. As I started to tighten down the first cap screw, the ball nut rotated and hit the bottom of the table. I noticed the two semicircle holes at the top of the ball nut. It gave me an idea to use cap screws as alignment spacers. Using needle nose pliers, I slipped two 4mm cap screws into the holes which aligned the block perfectly. I tightened down the two cap screws onto the clamping block. And again, using needle nose pliers, I slid out the two cap screws that I used as spacers. The ball nut was in perfect alignment. With the ball screw assembly now secured in place, it was time to change my focus to the ball screw brackets at the ends of the table. I started by removing the motor to get access to the ball screw so I could rotate it with the drill. I figured, in order to get the best alignment, I needed to get the end bracket as close as possible to the ball nut. So I ran the table all the way to the right. Because I was using a plastic gib, and the table was cantilevered all the way out to the right, I thought a gap might develop between the saddle and the table. So I put 15 kilograms of weight on the table, or about 30 pounds, to counterbalance the unsupported end of the table. Then I reinstalled the motor with shaft coupler to align the bracket with the ball screw. Once everything was in position, I leveled the bracket and tightened it down. The resulting position was about one millimeter below the tabletop. I repeated this procedure for the other end of the table, which is easier because the angular contact bearings are already in place, so you don't have to install the motor. Now that the ball screw assembly and both of the end brackets are secured, it's time to remove the washers from underneath of the ball screw that were used as spacers. The washer was now covered in lithium grease that I used on the ball screw so it sticks to whatever it touches. After removing the washer from the right hand side, I double check the clearance under the ball screw and repeat for the other end of the table, remove the washer and double check the clearance. With everything assembled and secured, the last thing to do is check for alignment and binding. Using the drill and shaft coupling adapter, I run the table through its full travel. Because the plastic gib has a bit tighter fit, I had to set the clutch on my drill to number 5 out of 23. Still, a very light clutch setting, and the table moved without any binding. The last thing I did, curious to see how the plastic gib would hold up, I set a dial indicator to measure the movement between the saddle and the table. I wiggled the table with as much force as I could gather and only noted about a quarter of a thousandth of movement between the table and the saddle. Not bad for plastic. And that completes the installation of the x-axis ball screw assembly. In the next video I'll be reinstalling the headstock and I'll talk about the jig I 3D printed for the mounting bolts. Click subscribe if you want to follow along.